Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I am one of the second grade teachers at the Soulard School. Here for Teaching in Room 9, I focus all my lessons on math for second graders, but everyone's always encouraged to join. Welcome back friends, thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to be here with me. Um, I hope that you've had a really good week and I'm just really happy and excited that I get to be here with you. All right, friends, we always start our lessons with our mindful minute activity. We always practice our mindfulness exercises so that we are able to slow our bodies down, check in with your mind and your body. How are you thinking and feeling right now? Really slow your breathing, focus on your five senses so that you're present in the moment. And then that way afterwards, hopefully you are feeling so centered, focused, and ready to learn here together today. All right, so for our uh, mindful minute exercise today, we're gonna do something called crocodile breathing. So I'm gonna ask that all of my friends, my little crocodiles at home, I would like you to lay on your belly. Okay, so you're gonna lay flat on your belly. And you can see my crocodiles getting into position. All right, so once you are flat on your belly, you are going to fold your arms just like this. You're gonna lay your head right down on top of your arms just like that. So you're flat on your belly and you're laying on your um, arms, your head on your arms just like that. We're just gonna take some slow breaths here together, friends. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. In and out. In and out. Okay, spend some time here, friends. Just really focusing on those deep breaths in and out in and out and when you are ready crocodiles slowly lift your heads you may sit up and uh, we can go ahead and move on to uh, what we're going to work on here together today i hope you enjoyed that crocodile breathing um, laying flat on your belly like that with your forehead on your arms folded really helps your body to start taking those deep breaths. It kind of reminds me too of child's pose when we do child's pose and yoga together um, and just kind of being there with the pressure on your head and um, it really just helps to relax your body and take that time to slow your body down. Nice job, crocodiles. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. Our learning goals this week again have been I can solve addition and subtraction problems within 1,000. So we've been using a different strategy each day in order to solve. Um, hopefully you're feeling really comfortable with all these different models and ways we, and strategies we've been solving so far. Um, and uh, it also says, I can understand numbers using number names, base 10 blocks, and expanded forms. That kind of touches on the different strategies that we've been using this week. So let's go ahead and look at our chart right here. We are down to our last strategy today, friends. So it says at the top, addition without regrouping. And so we've been using these four strategies, or three so far for today, um, to solve addition without regrouping. And then we're using our understanding of addition and subtraction, their relationship, to be able to use these same strategies to reverse it and then take away and figure out what the subtraction um, equations are. We've again been working with fact families um, so we can really understand that relationship between our numbers. So let's touch on these um, strategies before we go on to our new one today, which is our standard model. So the first one we did was our base 10 blocks. I've been continuing to do this each day because um, I think it's a great visual model for my friends to be able to see. So here's the same addition equation for all four strategies, 52 plus 45. So in the base 10 model, we break it down into tens and ones, 
and we draw it out. So you drew for 52, five tens rods for the 50, and two ones for the two. Then you drew out your add end of 45, and you had four tens for 40 and five ones. Then you can see it really nice and easy, and you're able to add them together. The ones, five and two is seven, 50 and 40 is 90, giving us the total of 97. Then we did the exact same process with expanded form. So instead of just drawing it out, we also wrote the expanded form uh, for each number as well that shows the value with that plus sign in between. So it shows that we can break 52 down into 50 plus two, right? If we add the tens and the ones together, we'll get that 52 over here. Then 40 plus five, now I can see easy peasy, I can add my ones, five and two is seven, 50 and 40 is 90, 90 plus seven is the expanded form for 97. Then yesterday, we used our number lines. We started, um, or we did 52, so we would start at that number on our number line, and then that add end we broke apart into again, tens and ones. So you can see I broke it down here into 40 and five, we made our jumps of 40 or 10, or our jumps of 10, those four jumps for 40, and then the, the other five to get that total of 97. And then over here, now we are going to do our standard models. That's what we'll focus on today. Standard model, which is what makes a lot of sense in my brain, it's what I grew up using, so that made a lot of sense to me, is to just stack the two add-ins on top of each other. So 52 on top of 45. And then you can kind of either draw or in your mind have the imaginary line that goes down to divide your ones and your tens. Start with your ones, five and two is seven, then your uh, tens, five and four is nine. So 52 plus 45 is 97. All right, so let's go ahead, friends. We're gonna take this guy down and we are going to practice that last strategy now here together, that standard model. So friends, you are helping mom or dad or grandpa or grandma um, or a guardian that you have at home to get supplies together for a harvest festival that you're having at school. So you are coming up with these table decorations and you are coming up with so many different cornucopias. Can I get a me too if you know what a cornucopia is? <laughs> I'm seeing some me too's and some like, no way Jose's. And that's okay, I've actually printed a picture out so we are all on the same page. This here, my friends, is a cornucopia. It is a very common uh, fall decoration. So it's like this sort of basket, and then inside are all these different seasonal um, produce or vegetables. So you can see there's like pumpkins, corn, um, squash, apples, onions, different things like that. So here's what we're doing, friends. You are helping your um, guardian to come up with the amount of pumpkins and the amount of gourds that you need to put into these cornucopias for the table decorations for your school's harvest festival. So my dears, you're going to start with the number 16. So if you don't have something to write with at home, please grab something to write with right now, paper and pencil, or maybe you have a dry erase board or sheet as well, and you're gonna write the number 16. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and write it, 16. Okay, hopefully my friends are coming back with something to write, and you write on the number 16. Okay, so this is the number of pumpkins that you need for your cornucopias for the Harvest Festival, the table decorations for the uh, festival. So 16 is how many pumpkins you need, and you're going to add on how many gourds you need. Okay, so 16 plus, and you need 42 gourds. So I'm gonna ask you to write the number 42 right underneath the 16. So let's go ahead and draw it out in base 10 blocks. So like in every single strategy we've used, we need to break it down into 
Let me hear you do it with me, friends. Tens and ones. Nice job. So for this number here, 16. How many tens do we have in 16? Okay, hold it up in your fingers. Ready? Three, two, one. One ten in 16. So I need one tens rod for 16, okay, which is worth 10, right? Because one base 10 block for the tens has 10 ones inside one tens rod. All right, now how many ones do I have in 16? Let me hear you say it, friends. Ready? Shout it out nice and loud. Yes, nice job. Six ones. So let's draw our six ones together. Ready? Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So here's 16. Here is the base 10 for the visual model for 16. One 10 for 10, and then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Six ones. All right, so now we are going to do our 42. I'm also going to go ahead and draw a dotted line. It's maybe not the straightest dotted line to show the difference between our T for tens and O for ones. All right, now let's draw 42 out. Okay, so we're going to break it down into our visual model of our base 10 blocks. How many tens are in 42? Okay, you're going to put it on your fingers for me. Ready? Hold it up. Three, two, one. Four. Four tens in 42. So we're going to draw four tens rods for 40. Are you ready? We're going to count it together as we draw our tens rods. 10, 20, 30, 40. All right. Now what do I do? I can't forget my, what is it? Yes, I cannot forget my ones, right? So I've got 40 here, but the number's 42. So how many ones do I need to add? You're really getting the hang of this, friends. Two ones. So 40 plus one, two ones gives me 42. All right, now in our standard model, we are just going to add straight up and down. And always, friends, Start with your ones. I say, you say, always start with your ones. Nice job. We want to start with our ones, friends, because once we move into regrouping, it's important that we start on this side so then it makes sense as we carry over. So six and two. So we're adding our ones. Let's go ahead and count our ones here together, friends. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe you knew right off the bat that six and two is eight. If you did it, we've got our visual model here for our ones, so we're able to put those together. So now we've done our ones. Now we need to go ahead and do our tens. Let's go ahead and erase our ones because we already counted those. Okay, so now we need to add our four tens, which is 40. And our 110 here, which is 10. So what is four tens plus 110? What is four plus one is? Let me see it on your fingers. You ready? Hold it up. Three, two, one. Five. Nice job. Four and one is five. Five tens. Let's count them as I erase. So We've got 10 here for 16, 20, 30, 40, 50. Nice job. So we counted 16 pumpkins that we needed for the cornucopia table decorations for the fall festival at school. And we added on the number of gourds that we needed, which was 40. Two. In standard model, you stack one number on top of the other add end, and then you can make this line right here, if that helps you to just write that line right on it, so that you're able to add your ones and then your ten. Six and two is eight, four and one is five. All right, now 
We're gonna solve the other addition equation in our fact family. So this time we're not starting with our number of pumpkins, we're gonna start with our number of gourds. So in a blank spot on your paper, go ahead and write the number 42. Okay, so that is our number of gourds that we need. All right, let's go ahead and draw out our base 10 visual model for 42. How many tens and how many ones? Okay, let's start with our tens. How many tens in 42? You ready to put it on your fingers for me? Ready? Three, two, one, four. Right, nice job. So let's go ahead and count them as we draw that single rod for each 10. 10, 20, 30, 40. Nice job. Now, how many ones? You say it out nice and loud. Let me hear you. Two. Nice job. Let's draw them together. Ready? One, two. So 41, two, 42. That's our number of gourds. Now we're going to add on our number of pumpkins to see how much we need for our cornucopias. Okay, and our pumpkins again was 16. All right, so 42 plus 16. We always in the standard model stack one add end on top of the other. And we have to make sure that our ones line up and our tens line up because then once we start getting into bigger numbers, you'll have more places in the place value, right? Like hundreds and thousands even, and 10,000s as you get higher and higher. So if they're not lined up right, you're gonna get a very different answer. So it's important that we line up our ones and our tens. Oops, I erased some of my six. All right, let's go ahead and draw out our uh, tens and ones for 16. How many tens in 16? Let me hear it. One, good job. One ten is ten plus how many ones? Yes, you are so amazing, friends. Six ones. Let's count them out. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm also gonna draw my equals line here. And before we get to add in, I'm gonna make our dotted line. So I'd like you to go ahead and make this dotted line on your paper at home. You're dividing up your T for tens, O for ones. All right, so which place do we start at, friends? Should I start adding my ones or my tens first? Yeah, say it after, after me, friends, you ready? We always start in the ones place. Yes, we have to start in the ones place, friends, because once we move into regrouping, we have to start here so it carries over and gets us to the right answer. So we're gonna add six and two together. I'm going to count and erase as we go. You already know it, you can write it down on your paper. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six plus two is eight. So we did our ones place first. Nice job. Now it is time to add our tens together. So we're gonna add, we did these here. Now we're gonna do the four tens and the one ten. And again, each tens rod is worth 10. We know this. So we're gonna skip count by tens. All right, so let's start up here and I'm gonna count by tens and erase as I go, ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So now I write 50 right here, right? Yeah, this is right, isn't it? 42 plus 16 is 508, right? No? Hmm, that number does look really big. What did I do wrong here, friends? Ah, oh, you are so right. I can't believe I messed that up. I didn't need to write 50. It's in the tens place. So I only needed to write five. Five in the tens place means that 
our um, five is worth 50. So 58. Good job, friends. You are so amazing. I'm going to erase. You're going to find a clean spot in your notebook to be able to write here together. Okay. I hope that my friends are liking this standard model. I really enjoy it. It's the uh, model I'm probably the most comfortable with, makes the most sense in my brain, and it's pretty quick too, right? Less drawing, less hops, just a little bit quicker for us to solve. There's just a couple of things we need to make sure we do each time. So we did both of our addition um, problems in our fact family. We first added our, um, pump, or our, yeah, our pumpkins to our gourds. The 16 and 42 gave us 58. Then we flipped the add-ins and we did 42 gourds plus 16 pumpkins gave us 58 altogether. Now we're time, it's time for us to do the subtraction. So we're starting with the total number of gourds and pumpkins, which again is 58. Okay, so we're getting ready to subtract using our standard model. So let's go ahead and draw out 58. How many tens are in 58? Okay, I need you to hold it up on your hand. Ready? Three, two, one. Five tens in 58. Let's count it out together. Ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I've got those five tens and it's worth 50. So now I need to draw out what? My? Yes, my ones. And I have how many ones? Yes, I have eight ones. Let's draw our eight dots. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, again, we're subtracting, so we're gonna put a minus sign here. We're going to take away the number of pumpkins, the six, so let's write 16. Again, we've got our ones have to line up and our tens have to line up or else we will get confused when we start getting into bigger numbers and get a very different answer. So we've lined up our ones, we've lined up our tens. I don't need to draw out 16 because I'm not adding it to 58. I'm taking it away. So I'll erase this time as I um, go through this problem. Um, but before we get going, I'm going to go ahead and draw my uh, dotted line to separate my tens and ones. So I want my friends at home to do the same thing. Ready? All the way down. And I even label it with a T for tens and an O for ones. Okay? All right. Now we're going to always start with the tens, right? No? Oh, you're right, the ones. We have to start with the ones and get into that practice now because once we move to um, addition and subtraction with regrouping, we're really gonna get our brains confused. So we always start with our ones. Okay, so eight ones minus six. Eight, take away six. Maybe you know right off the bat what it is. If you do, that's amazing. Go ahead and write it down. I'm gonna count it out here, friends. So I'm gonna erase six ones from the eight. Ready? One. Two, three, four, five, six. How many did I have left? Yes, two ones left. Nice job. All right, now I've got my 58 here, or my 50 in the tens. I need to take away my, my 110 here. So we're going to get rid of just one of these tens rods. Are you ready? 10. All right, so how many do I have left? Now let's count out the tens rods. We skip out by tens, ready? 10, 20, 30, 40. So now I write down 40, right? Wait a minute. No, that's right, that's gonna give me a really big number. 58 take away 16 isn't 402. That's way wrong, that can't be right. It's just the four for the tens. Five minus one is four. So we know that that four represents a value of 40. And then when our eight minus six was two, so 58 um, 
gourds and pumpkins all together that we needed for the cornucopia. We took away the 16 pumpkins, gave us the 42 gourds. Now it's time to do our very last fact family equation, friends. So we're gonna do again, it'll be subtraction. So I'm going to erase, erase, find a clean spot for you to work in your um, notebook or your paper at home. All right, you ready, friends? We're gonna start again with the total number of gourds and pumpkins all together, which again was 58. All right, so we just drew this out, friends. So we know 58 has, let me hear, how many tens? Yes, five tens. Ready? Let's go ahead and draw out our base 10, um, the tens rods, five of them to give us 50. Let's count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Nice job. Now I need to do my ones. And we have how many ones? Eight ones. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have a total of 58. 50 for my tens. I had five tens rods and eight ones. Take away, so draw your minus sign. Now this time we just took away the pumpkins the last time, so this time we're taking away the gourds, which again is 42. So I'm gonna write 42, and I make sure my ones and my tens line up. Okay, super important. So let's go ahead and draw our dotted line to show us. So go ahead and draw it on yours at home, ready? Do, 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 all the way down. And I'll label this side T for tens, O for ones, so we can see it really nice and easy. All right, so now 42. I don't need to draw it because again, I'm taking it away from here, so we'll erase this side. We're gonna start by taking away the ones because we always, always, always start in the ones place. Say it again with me. We always start in the ones place. Nice job. We wanna start that way so it's easy for us when we get to regrouping. So we have eight ones here. We're gonna take away two ones. Okay, if you know the answer, go ahead and write it down. One, two gives me, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight minus two is six. Nice job. So we did those tens. Now we need to do the uh, ones. Or we, we did the ones, now we need to do the tens. Right, five minus four. So we've got 50 for 58, 40 for 42. So we gotta take away four of these tens rods. Let's count together, ready? 10, 20, 30, 40. How many do I have left? Yes, just one. Five minus four is one. So our 110 left gave us a total of, or a difference of 16. We had 58 all together for the gourds and the pumpkins. We took away in this one, our um, gourds gave us 16 pumpkins for how much we needed for the cornucopias for our uh, harvest festival at school. You guys did such an amazing job taking away and adding together and always making sure we break it down into tens and ones. So thank you to all of my friends. You are so amazing. You should be so proud of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.